This is the story of Hansel and Gretel. On the edge of a small clearing near a great forest, there lived a poor woodcutter and his wife and his two children, Hansel and Gretel. The wife was the children's stepmother and she was very cruel to them. They had always been very poor, but one time there was a great famine in the country and the woodcutter could not earn even enough to buy any food for his family. The poor woodcutter worried day and night. Finally, he said to his wife, What shall we do? We will surely starve. The food we have left is not enough for the children, let alone for us. I have a plan, the stepmother said. Early in the morning, we will take the children into the forest and leave them in the thickest part of it. They will never find their way home again, and we will be rid of them. I cannot do that, cried the woodcutter. But the cruel woman forced him to agree. Now Hansel and Gretel heard them talking, and Hansel thought of a clever plan. Creeping outside, he filled his pockets with pebbles. The next morning, before the sun was up, the stepmother shouted to the children, Get up, you lazy bones. We are going into the forest to cut wood. Here is a piece of bread. Don't eat it yet, because you won't get any more. Then they set off for the forest, with Hansel and Gretel lagging in the rear. Gretel carried their bread, and Hansel stopped every few steps to drop a pebble on the ground. Finally, the father called back. Hansel, hurry up. What's keeping you? Oh, I'm just looking at my white kitten who's sitting on the roof, said Hansel. She's trying to say goodbye to me. You fool, cried the stepmother. That's the sunshine glinting on the roof. When they reached the middle of the forest, the father built a good fire. Then the stepmother said, wait by the fire while we go to chop wood. We will come back to get you. Hansel and Gretel fell asleep. When they woke up, it was night. Hansel comforted Gretel, who was frightened by the dark. And then, when the moon came up, they could see the pebbles that Hansel had dropped, and they followed them all the way home. When they got home, the cruel stepmother planned again to get rid of them, and the next day, they all went once more to the forest. This time, Hansel was not able to collect pebbles. He dropped breadcrumbs instead. But when evening came, they could not find the breadcrumbs. The birds had eaten them. All night they walked, and all the next morning, suddenly they saw before them a little house, all made of gingerbread with windows of spun sugar. They ran toward it eagerly. Hansel ate a piece of the roof, and Gretel ate some of the window. Then they heard a voice saying, Nibble, nibble like a mouse. Who is nibbling at my house? The children answered, It's only the wind. And they went on eating. Then the door of the house opened and an old woman came out leaning on a crutch. The two children were very frightened, but the ugly old woman spoke very sweetly. Do come in, she said. You must be very hungry and tired, for you look as if you've come a long way. Then she led them into her house. There she invited them to sit down to dinner. They were so hungry that they ate everything on the table. When they had finished, the old woman put them to bed in great, comfortable beds. Now, although the old woman seemed so kind, she was really a wicked witch who ate little children. So while Hansel and Gretel were sleeping, she was thinking of the fine meal she would have. The next morning, she awakened Hansel and put him into a cage. No matter how he begged to get out, her heart did not soften. Then she woke up Gretel and put her to work. I'm going to eat you both, she said. But first, you can do some of my work. So poor Gretel had to carry water, chop kindling, scrub floors, and sweep the rooms. Gretel did not get very much to eat, but the best kind of food was given to Hansel, for the witch thought he was too thin. Each morning, she asked him to stretch out his finger so she could feel how fat he was, for she could not see well. But Hansel stuck out an old bone, so she thought he was not growing any fatter. At last, the witch decided to eat him anyway. Gretel had to build the fire and fill the kettle, and she cried as she worked. Then the witch came to Gretel and said, Crawl in the oven, Gretel, and see if it is hot enough. But Gretel replied, I don't know how to do it. How do I climb into the oven? Stupid, cried the witch. The door is big enough. Why, I could get in myself. She bent down and put her head in the oven. 
quick as a flash, Gretel pushed her in and slammed the door. <laughs> then Gretel let Hansel out of his cage. Hansel, we're free, she cried. The old witch is dead. Filling their pockets with glittering jewels from the witch's hoard, they set off through the woods determined to find their way home. But though Hansel and Gretel walked and walked, they were still lost and not a thing looked familiar. Just when they had given up hope, they heard a happy cry. There was their father coming toward them. Hansel! Gretel! Cried the father, hurrying to them. I have looked and looked for you. He took them home, and Hansel and Gretel found that their cruel stepmother had gone away forever. And with the jewels that they brought from the witch's house, they were able to live comfortably and happily ever after. <laughs> 